exploring fear, faith, and stories that scare the hell out of us. Be afraid. Listeners of the podcast, my guest today really needs no introduction. But what the hey, I'll introduce him anyway. He is a star on both the small screen and big screen, probably best known for his comedic work on shows like Arrested Development, among others. Uh, He's also played a number of dramatic roles that have garnered critical attention. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to welcome my guest today, Mr. Jason Bateman. (laughs) Oh, wait, no, that's a joke. Yes, good. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, uh, Tony Hale, thank you. So much for being with us and talking with us today. Thank you for having me. Um, but I, I did go back and binge some Arrested Development. Oh, you did? So it's been... God, I haven't seen it in... I really don't watch it that much. And I like when people talk to me about it because they'll say stuff that I don't, I don't remember. Well, I didn't catch oh, until so the second time that, <laughs> that your arm gets eaten by Lucille. Mm-hmm. A Lucille. <laughs> like... I, like, yeah. Until the second time, I'm like, "Oh, that's brilliant." Yeah. Um, yeah. I, do you did you have any hand in writing that, or does that just come to you? Uh, no, that was script? all Mitch. That was all Mitch, and he just um, it was it wasn't just what he came up with. It was the timeline of stuff he came up with. Because I remember when Buster, before he lost his hand, he had this hand chair, <laughs> and I remember thinking, I remember thinking, "This is weird. Why does Buster have a hand chair? That's kind of odd." And there was all these references to like hand off. That's like right. like on the alarm, it was like something arm off. Oh. Like I had the um, and it was like arm off, and I was like, "All right, whatever, man." Oh. And then he told me my hand was coming off, and I was like, "Oh, damn!" Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that was a part of the equation. That's a brilliant callback. It, like you don't even wow. Yeah, so you don't even have whole, to tell people about it. He had a whole grid in his head that I was wow. nobody was aware of. Oh. Well, it's uh, it's hilarious. It's great. It stuff. is really funny stuff. Um, but uh, I'm amazing. You. <laughs> Is that what this podcast you, is for? Yeah. It's just yeah. to say I'm a like, great. So tell me well, a little bit more about here. how awesome you are. Um, and yet, it is not a podcast about your amazingness. It's actually oh, a podcast damn. about what you hate the most, oh, oh, um, besides yourself. Um, yeah. So we're going to start with uh, the question Very I've true. asked everybody. Yeah. What's your earliest memory of being afraid? <laughs> are you serious? Mm-hmm. I, my, oh, that's a great question. My earliest memory of being afraid... I would say would be when my dad was in the army, we were stationed in Berlin for two years and we lived in Berlin and Heidelberg. And in Berlin, they gave us these really big houses for the people that were coming in. And like in Heidelberg, they moved us to an apartment, but in Berlin, they gave us this huge house to live in. And I I have this very vivid memory, not vivid, but kind of recollection of them being gone for the night and me being alone, my brother and my sister not caring about me, but being somewhere else in the house. And just the kind of terror where you're frozen. <laughs> and I was like, I would just stay behind this piano. And I was just frozen. And to this day, I don't like being by myself in a house. Um, night, we've, we'll get probably talk about this, but Nightmare on Elm Street, that was the last horror movie I ever watched. Just It's just, there's this, there's this absolute... And I remember, I even have a memory of... I was visiting a friend of mine in college and there was a hurricane and nobody was in the house and I was just frozen in this spot like I didn't know how to move. There was something about being by myself that just like to this day kind of freaks me out. How are you with pianos? <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> Big trigger. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's I don't know. It, I, I'll, I remember the exact space because there was a piano there and there was like a little kind of weird stained glass situation but just desperate for them to come home. And then we can all maybe all resonate with this when you see their headlights and you're just like, (gasps) I'm safe again. Mm -hmm. You know, they're back. I've been saved, Mm -hmm. which is an interesting kind of a thing of, of when you see them, it's, it is almost the saving component component of like, Oh, they're going to rescue me from this like chasm of fear that I'm in, you know? Wow. That's good. Um, I'd forgotten about this. I, I remember, bizarro story uh i was in a, a youth group at a church in texas and we would go up to New, uh, southern colorado to ski and um it was a ski trip for multiple days and one night uh, everybody goes to the like the hot springs or whatever for a trip and i'm like i don't I, I wasn't feeling good or something so i stay home and it was kind of an old house like this that we're all yeah, staying yeah, yeah. and i'm i'm 
laying on uh, the couch watching whatever television and didn't realize that then it went dark. It got dark early because it's the winter. Oh, God, And yeah. it's pitch black. And all I've got is TV. And same thing because I'm like, I'm just frozen. I can't move. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm like, when are they getting back? When are they getting yeah, back? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. exact same thing. And I literally, now I wasn't behind a piano. I was laying down, thankfully. Otherwise, uh, that would have been trouble. But man, it's right. Something about um, being alone. You haven't seen it since Nightmare on Elm Street was the last one you saw. Right. Um, but there's a recent movie called Skin of Marink. Uh, it's a found footage horror movie. <clears throat> and it's basically... Okay, forget it, about it. it that, just, <laughs> that just feeds into every oh. component of my fear. Yeah. The so whole found footage You crap. shouldn't watch this because it almost looks like it's like those... Uh, those teddy bear like uh nannies cams yeah kind of sure sure so the whole thing is stuff like that yeah. and it's two kids two <laughs> little kids wake up in the house not just all alone so the parents have disappeared yeah and all the windows and doors of the house have disappeared yeah forget it i mean so, it's just yeah. there's nothing more horrifying yeah. that's like that thing of like when somebody that whole have you checked the children and then they're in their basement I mean, mm. if somebody only had to tell me that i never even <laughs> saw the movie and i'm like that's haunted me mm -hmm. you know so Nightmare on Street was the last horror movie you watched. Do you have a first memory of like being terrified by a movie? Yeah, it was. Uh, last movie, I would say it was probably Nightmare on Elm Street because I. Well, there's a couple things that going back to that piano thing. Just as you were talking, I was thinking. I do wonder, and this is sounding very kind of you know super spiritual, but mm. this is Christianity. Mm -hmm. But you do wonder if, as you know, kids are so. I'm a artist. I'm hypersensitive. Um, I have a heightened intuition to th things. Maybe, I don't know if it's because of trauma or whatever. But you do wonder if there's like a heightened awareness to the darkness in another world. Like mm -hmm. if it, it's not just the fact that, oh, don't be, don't be, you're, you're safe. You're, but when you're by yourself as a kid and you don't, um, I don't know. You just kind of wonder if there's portals, not the right word, but you know that there's something going on outside of just what you're, what we're all seeing in this world. Mm -hmm. And if there is a heightened awareness to that, and that kind of attributes to that tremendous frozen fear, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I don't know if that's true, but I just do wonder if like there is an awareness to that, you know, yeah. anyways, um, I would say, okay, so the, my first memory would be definitely not my Elm street. Um, and I did the whole thing where I watched it with friends. Mm -hmm. We were we were somewhere, and I think that would I might have, I might have seen something before that, but I think that made such an impact because um, Freddie could get in your dreams, mm -hmm. and it was mm -hmm. and I think before that sleep was such a safe space, mm -hmm. or when you're able to check out, mm -hmm. and that the damn writers of that movie, <laughs> the fact that they they entered that safe space and said, that's not safe anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was like, <gasps> mm -hmm. and then my brother to this day, he feels bad about it. Older, uh, younger, older. older brother. I was asleep and he found Freddie's hand and, and he scared the absolute shit out of me. And oh. actually in that moment, and he was, he's only four years older than me. So he was, I was middle school. So he was high school he felt awful. So for a mm. teenager to feel awful, I guess the reaction that I gave, because mm. it was so traumatizing. I mean, I was just like, oh, and I, I've never seen one since. Oh, well, um, I think, it, as I said before, I'm, I'm kind of with you. I've always been, I, I mean, the ones I've, I, the one that I remember, I finally said, okay, no more. Yeah. Uh, was when I saw the Blair Witch Project. Um, and I'm just like, okay, no, nope, I'm done. It just messed me up it's just, like, just permanently. I wouldn't even say that. It's like that whole, yes, that, and that whole paranormal activity stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when people, <laughs> people, you know, talk about it and they're like, oh, Tony, it's this and this. I'm like, no guys, like you're touching on some, in my perspective, where I'm coming from is that stuff is real. So mm -hmm. why are we, why are we even playing with that? Mm -hmm. Like, don't. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just, you don't have to scratch the surface yeah. of that stuff, you know? We're going to get there, actually. Okay, Let's talk good. a little okay, bit about good, that good, and good. see. Um, Great. Uh, okay, so now we're going to... Nothing's better than a guest that just keeps no. jumping ahead. No, it's fine. <laughs> um, but I, I want to give you a, a, like a comedic breather uh, to oh, go sure, back sure. to your sweet spot. Because I'm on um, the verge of tears? Is that why? Yes, yeah. No, just I'm, I'm about a narrative <laughs> arc here. So um, given that 
your personal sort of concerns with it and in response to it, you haven't really played a lot of characters <laughs> that would be uh, in that in that sort sure, of wheelhouse. Sure, sure, sure. So, kind of moving back then, what is your like favorite character? Because w- here's what I've observed: yeah. is you were you know that's the classic like you're the busiest man in Hollywood or whatever. Yeah. But you you have like you have a list of a lot of different stuff you're doing: mm-hmm. voiceover stuff, um, live action. Uh, but you also play uh, good guys, bad guys mm-hmm. in between. So what's do you like doing all of it, or is there mm. a particular kind of character you're most drawn to? Yeah, I really, I mean, to color that a little more, I think it's, um, I always make jokes in interviews that I'm very good at doing anxiety. Hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, it, it, it's, it's a forte of mine. And there's a reason for that, mm-hmm. because I was, fear has been a huge mm-hmm. component in my life. Like, uh, because of, uh, family issues when it comes to kind of dealt my family's dealt with and uh, growing up and all that kind of stuff and not that they instilled fear but like just dysfunction and kind of what that breeded and just like fear and anxiety has been kind of a component so I I do do it well so even something that I'm not going to go to a, I, I, I don't like I don't like being by myself as a kid and in that frozen fear it's interesting how that can um, be an equation for doing your work later, mm-hmm. you know, how it can be for lack of a better word used for good. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like the equation getting there, <laughs> but it's like, it is a part of my work. And so you look at Buster, you look at mm-hmm. Gary from Veep. Um, I, I do do it well and I can come from an authentic place mm-hmm. when I do it well. I've experienced mm-hmm. panic attacks. I know how to, as a Buster, mm-hmm. I know how to do a panic attack. Um, now, when it comes to having that variety, I do like, I don't mind playing dark. Hmm. Um, like the show I did, Mysterious Benedict Society, hmm. it's one of the characters, I would say it was a little more troubled than he was evil, mm-hmm. but it is fun to play that mm-hmm. angle. Um, but my wife is to this day baffled by me because she's like, you have no problem playing it, but you just can't watch it. You can't, hmm. I, I mean, I oh. cannot... I can't disengage. Like, I mean, I, (laughs) she makes the joke that when we were watching the office, I had to leave the room because it was too uncomfortable because the whole time I'm just like, fire the guy. Why is the guy still working there? (laughs) He shouldn't be there. He's, you know, he's toxic (laughs) in the work environment. And she's like, Tony, it is a, but I, it's like, I can't Hmm. disengage. I can't disengage. And there's something about like, she likes handmaid's tale. She loves, you know, the really heavy stuff. And I'm like, Yes, I understand that story is not happening, but that story somewhere has happened like Mm -hmm. that, where someone Mm -hmm. has lost a child Mm -hmm. or something. So Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily want to see it played out, Mm -hmm. but I know it's impactful. Mm -hmm. I know that people are inspired by it Mm -hmm. and resonate with it. So I have no problem Mm -hmm. playing it, but there's something about watching it that I'm just like, it just, Mm -hmm. it's too, it's too hard for me to watch. Mm -hmm. Um, Benedict Society is an interesting point too, because... I found that interesting of imagining the difficulty of essentially playing sort of mirror opposite characters. It, you know, Mm. there are actual twins, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. If I'm remembering right. Yeah. Was it, did that make it easier to like play both those characters or was there like a unique struggle because you kind of were trying to do both at the same time? Mm. I don't know. (laughs) It's like, it's like when people ask me questions about Buster and I'm like, it scares me how like comfortable, <laughs> like how naturally it came to me. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, well, that's yeah. dark. But um, switching back and forth wasn't a real hmm. uh, problem from that. Maybe that's because you know there's that Jekyll and Hyde in all of us. But hmm. um, I didn't have such a hard time with it. But what did help was constantly remembering that the storyline of the brothers is they were raised in an orphanage, hmm. and massive abandonment issues. Hmm. One of them got adopted kind of the good brother and Hmm. the other one was left behind. And so you always came from this place when it came to the quote evil brother, you saw more of the troubled component just because he had so many unresolved Hmm. trauma issues, Hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. which kind of interesting too, because, um, although you don't like to watch them, maybe some of the better horror movies, whoever's the cause of the horror has often like, is a victim of some sort of trauma, right? Like they, um, and something has gone wrong. And, uh, so it's not always just their pure evil, right? It's that always. Yeah. 
And it's, there is, I mean, as dark as this stuff is, it is, you always do want to trace like, damn, what happened to them, yeah. you know, to get to this space. And side note, when my friends are in, because <laughs> you, we always want to be supportive of our friends and their work. And when my mm-hmm. friends are in stuff, I always tell them, and it's true, I say, I'll, I'll, I'll fast forward to your parts, mm-hmm. you know, so I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, because they're also something out of context. Mm-hmm. Like I can... I can fast forward to their spot and watch that scene or watch the scene that they really, whatever they're proud of. Cause out of context, I'm not as, I'm not yeah. as attached to it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then yeah. I can just look at their acting and be like, yeah. well, great job. Well, I mean, my sort of theory of all art is that it, it like traffics and empathy. So yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. the whole point is to get you emotionally engaged from, you know, opening scene to closing. And if yeah. you're just dropping in, you're not, you're not yeah. there. So that makes sense. Another side note. Cause I like going a little bit tangent, That's but good. I just did um, Hocus Pocus. Oh, yeah. And I remember the whole faith. There was like this whole weird Twitter thing of the faith. Com- some people in the faith community being like, these are witches and they eat children and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, I just wanted to stand up and scream because at the time, Dahmer was the most popular thing watched on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you're okay mm-hmm. with Dahmer being the most popular thing to watch, and yet you're against some cartoon mm-hmm. witches mm-hmm. supposedly eating children and humor. Mm-hmm. Like that was just made me want to scream. Mm-hmm. Did you? Uh, was the pushback? I, I just hadn't heard that. Um, was it because it's like a cultish and witch? I think it was or? kind of like a cultish, and I think it was like a very very right uh, okay. p- component of people. But it, w- it got some traction on Twitter, and I was just like, come. on. On, <laughs> you know, like this is crazy. There's a lot of inconsistency yeah. in the Christian community, in particular. Sure. Um, and I, you know, I'll even say um, uh, the non non Christian when it comes yeah. to horror, because you know the same people that hate whatever the the violence or whatever sure. of horror have no problem with other yeah. kinds of violence or other kinds. You know, and it's yes. like, well, which you know, what's the problem here? Yeah, um, exactly. And we're just gotten used to and accustomed to it. Yeah. Um, and so sort of different commitments, but it's still, I'm with you. That's super annoying. My sort of story of um, meeting comedic heroes. So this is a question about mm-hmm. working with people that you go like, oh, these are people I look up to or respect. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I don't really get starstruck or whatever. And mm-hmm. I've, I've met a few, I'd say significant people. Well, except people. today. Except today. I Before know. today. Yeah, That's yeah, why this, this is where this is leading. I know, so. I know, I know. Um, but another person that you've worked with, I did, and I was at, I don't know, some place, Glendale Mall or something, in a mm. Footlocker, mm. and in walks Julia Louise Dreyfus. Oh yeah. And I'm like, she's such a hero of mine. Yeah, yeah. On the one hand, there's a certain level of people here I just ignore. I'm like, I let them live their lives. Sure, but I'm sure, like, sure. I can't pass this up. I got to say something. But then I got paralyzed. I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah. What do I say? What yeah, do, yeah. Do I do it? Do I do her dance? Do I, and then I'm like, no, because everybody who's ever said hi to her did this. You can't do that. It has to be memorable for her, whatever. 30 minutes, I swear, in oh, the Foot Locker, oh, like sure. feet away from her. And then she leaves. And I'm like, ha! Ah. <laughs> so I just wonder, do you... I want you, that on video of you just like, oh, pacing her. Oh, it's just awful. I can't, what am I going to say? And I'm like trying to... I can't remember if it was before texting or whatever. I'm like, I got to text someone to give me... like, yeah, what do yeah, I, you yeah, know? yeah. So it'd just be... I mean, like, you play with a lot of like yeah. people like that sure. um and maybe her is a good example like do you do you still if you're anxious in general like mm. buster like do you still get mm. like kind of like ooh, i'm i'm with some like comedic legends here because yeah. i'm i'm working i used i used to i mean i know i think there's certain uh, i'm trying to think of like there was i met carol burnett once mm. and i mm. uh i really tried <laughs> to keep it together <laughs> and um it's that sad reality where you your body is trying to keep it together but there's it's so obvious you're not together and so you're like trying to seem relaxed and like you look the opposite um but she oh and i also met tim conway once from oh. the carol burnett show oh. and um same thing but i think the more i mean the more i'm w- with these people and I, I see behind the curtain a little more. Mm-hmm. It's such a gift because mm-hmm. you see, uh, you see the humanity. Um, you see also the, cause I do the same thing you, you did with her that I did with Carol and Tim, the power that's given to them that is not meant for them, you know, but it's just the, the platform that our society puts them on. Um, 
when you kind of see behind the curtain a little more, it's, it's, I'm, I'm grateful for that because I don't have that uh, weight that I give it to as much as I used to. However, cut to, you know, I'm probably going to be, something's going to happen. I'm going to fall apart with somebody, mm-hmm. you know, because it's, I mean, there's, I was just recently into, um, I've been reading a lot of N.T. Wright mm-hmm. recently and, and going through his commentaries. And uh, <laughs> I thought like, am I, I was having uh, lunch with um, Laura Lee Ferrer mm-hmm. yesterday, mm-hmm. who we both know, and mm-hmm. and she met him at Fuller once, and I was like, really? <laughs> I mean, that's one like, oh man, I don't know if I would know what to say, you know, because I'm now mm-hmm. such a fan of his writing. <sighs> I'll let you Tony, know. Tony, I would like to, send, all of a sudden uh, N.T. Wright uh, comes into the room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have a special guest. Actually, I, I drove him around. Did uh, you? Yeah, we hung out uh, oh, wow. when he was here. Um, and I basically, for some reason, I'm like, like we need someone to pick up N.T. Wright from the airport. I'm like, I'll do it. And so yeah. uh, I got to hang out and chat with him. He's, he's a good dude. And it's like when I, I've been journaling a lot, and so like his initials are N.T.W. So I'll like N.T.W. There's a ton of like N.T.W.s hmm. in my journal. I just write his quotes out. Hmm. Um, what it, is there a particular book of his or idea that you're like, yeah, that's... well, I went through, um, his kind of Lent series hmm. over Lent. And then while I was, I was just in Italy for, um, six months doing this, this job and, and I made the choice to, I'm going to go through Romans as I'm, hmm. as I'm, as I'm there. And so I went as in, the, as in Rome do as, 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 do, yeah. as, I do, as <laughs> the Romans do. Mm-hmm. And so I went through his commentary on, on Romans and now I'm in first Corinthians. And, oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to brag, but, uh, I, mean, I got you, him a coffee. You should be pretty intimidated sitting here with me oh, in terms I of am. like theological people. I mean, <laughs> am I right guys? Like, okay. Uh, yeah. So that's what I, um, coffee. all right. So who, uh, then who would it be? So maybe NT Wright. Um, would there be someone else you're like, Ooh, I'd get a little, who, yeah. who would be Catherine about? O'Hare oh, from yes. Schitt's Creek. Yes. I, I met, I met her twice, and Excuse I had me, this from Home Alone. From Home, okay. from yeah. Home you're right. You're <laughs> the right. greatest film of all time. I okay, yes. um, one and two. I um, I met her twice actually, and I had that same experience where it was just <gasps> I wanted to make that impression like mm. you you did with Julia. But every time I see her, I I genuinely to me, I mean Julia, her they're in the same category. Mm-hmm. It's what Catherine O'Hare brings to the table in terms of surprise, mm-hmm. like just <laughs> on Shit's Creek and just in general through all the uh, Christopher Guest movies oh, man. and all that stuff. It's, it's the surprise element like, oh, I never saw that coming. So there's another girl on Righteous Gemstones that I'm kind of enthralled by, and her name is Edie Patterson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Edie Patterson, and she plays Judy on Righteous Gemstones. And she is just, it's that surprise element. I'm like, oh. Oh, you're fantastic. Mm. You know, so I think I'm probably going to get nervous when I meet her. And then obviously I get really nervous with Catherine O'Hare. Oh, man. Catherine O'Hare in the premiere of The Crows movie. Oh, my God. I just like. Incredible. (laughs) Incredible. The wine commercial she did. Oh, my gosh. When she was trashed. It is so good. (laughs) And it's also something that you look at and you just go, oh. Because it's a very actory thing to say, oh, your choices are so good. You're so choice. You're so, you're so good. Okay. Yeah. But like her choices, just where she comes up with this stuff, yeah. is, I think is uh, just a, a gifting. It oh, is a gifting. Uh, and that she can also play, I mean, like really, like play pretty straight laced character in Home yeah. Alone. One of yeah. my favorite, like growing yeah. up on that, I'm like, man, totally. she's like the the quintessential mom yeah. figure. Back to like the rescuing. I think, oh, I think that's part of why I love her so much is... The end of that. And I see Home Alone as a horror movie. Um, and oh, yeah. It's like a home invasion horror. By the way, it's Home Alone is, that's my entire experience we're talking about exactly. in Germany. Yeah. And, then, and then she's the one that comes back. Like, she's yes. the one that's pursuing yes. and, and gets back. And so that, you know, so. Yeah. Um, hmm. Also, another connection back. This, these are all segues, my skill segues. So, uh, Gosh, you really have D- some really Danny McBride, segues. Righteous Gemstones. Yes. Uh, writing credit on the new Exorcist film. So speaking of Danny McBride and exorcism yeah. and comedy. And he, didn't he also do all the, um, uh, the uh, Halloween Halloweens, movies? yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, now, the last two, yeah. here's a, th- a thought. Um, and tell me what you think here. I think there's some overlap between comedy and horror, hmm. at least from an audience perspective. Hmm. Um, do you see, because I want you to say, if you can, talk hmm. a little bit about what I've been told is a, well, a mutual friend of ours called it Bambi horror. I don't exactly know what that means. Yeah. Uh, but you're like Disney. St- like, well, like I think what he always... meant was like kind of horror or horror ish. 
um, that you were on a project with, who did it? Um, let me look at it. Well, I think it's to your point of like the Disney, it's all trauma based. It's all parents dying and all that kind of stuff. So, so are they coming from like your, your instincts as a comedic actor? Are there, would you see some similar instincts in acting in a horror film or playing yeah. evil parts? Well, yeah, I mean, kind of the, if, if, if both of them, which I think they are just deriving from fear, anxiety is driving from fear. Look at Buster and then obviously horror mm -hmm. is driving from it. Um, using, I guess, not, yeah, it's, 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 they're both the tool of fear, hmm. at least in the comedy I've done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you look at horror, it's that, that's the tool. Oh. Um, the, it's with Seth Worley, what you did with oh, him. Oh, yes, dude, yes. I'm so excited about mm. this. It's called Sketch. It's coming out. Well, right now we're, fin he's finishing up and we're, it's going to go hopefully down the festival route. And it is. Oh, it's so good. And it, the whole story is that it's this little girl who had trauma. Her mm. mom passed away. I'm the dad. And she writes these really horrific pictures mm. to deal with it. And they come to life. Oh. And it's, it's like a, it's like an inside out meets Jurassic Park kind oh. of a situation. Huh. And it's uh it's so beautifully done. And Seth is so fantastic. Mm. And I, I highly recommend him for the podcast. Oh yeah, He's that'd be great. Really good. Um, and what kind of character do you play in? Or are you gonna say? I'm his dad. I'm, oh, her, okay. I'm the little girl's dad, oh. and so dealing with like, oh, these are awful mm -hmm. pictures, but I also want you to work out your feelings. Mm -hmm. um, it's just great. It's great. So, uh, you have you told me earlier an 18 year old daughter. I do. Um, I also think it's interesting. A lot of horror movies. Uh, we were talking earlier deal with children like children are involved yeah. and we're like well what's the why is that and i and i was saying like well on one hand it seems like all of us as children felt so vulnerable yeah to the things that happened because yeah, yeah, they yeah. happen to us more yeah, than you know you're defenseless yeah and so there's that so it's tapping into that yeah. but then also as a parent you're like t i well i'll say as i as a parent so maybe i'm the only bad one um like there's a new kind of horror that I can't actually prevent. I can't protect them from everything. Um, Damn, that's so true. So I wonder, is that kind of going on in this film as, with you as that character going, I've seen the trauma, I'm witnessing it, and yeah. I feel even like a victim to the, what's happening to my kid. Yeah, because it's that sense of hers is not, in this film it's not so much, I would think, something happening to her, but it's what's internally happening mm -hmm. to her and, mm -hmm. and hoping that protection mm -hmm. is going on. But to your point, that is so true. I, when I was in Rome, I thought, because I was kind of obsessed with the Colosseum, and I went a couple mm. times, and so I decided to watch Gladiator mm. over. And I forget that atrocious foundation of that his wife and his mm -hmm. child were murdered. And then he goes back, and they're murdered. And you're like, oh? <laughs> mm. I mean, that was the entire tool that caused his revenge plot. Mm -hmm. And just that's every parent's... Mm -hmm. Nightmare. I mean, that's where my nightmares kick in as something happening to my mm -hmm. wife and daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, ugh, it's awful. Mm -hmm. It's like a, yeah, it's like a new kind of vulnerability that, ah, man, it doesn't, yeah, it's weird. Um, the source of everything that's meaningful, maybe that's it too, of like the, the threat of that being oh, removed it's just, or taken away, whatever. I mean, she's driving to school every day and I'm trying not oh. to have narratives in my head of something oh, happening. Um, all right. So now though, you don't watch any horror, but it almost sounds like you don't watch much of anything. I don't watch much of anything. Um, I mean, I watch a lot of YouTube. Uh, <laughs> what I kinds of things? I uh, watch, like, I'll tell you exactly what? what I watch on YouTube. I watch um, compilation videos of The Voice. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, when I'm traveling, I'll, I'll, if I, like, have downtime, I have seen every compilation of The Voice, but I never want to see when they're rejected. I only Okay, that's that was my question. Is it only the glorious ones? It's only the glorious okay. ones. It's only the golden buzzers of America's Gotten Talent. But I, and it's not just the, it's not just the talent. It's the reaction of mm -hmm. the parents when the chairs mm -hmm. turn around. Mm -hmm. It's the reaction when they get, when they hit the golden, I just love it. And this is what's interesting. Okay, here's the other component. This is some serious psychology um, okay. minefield. You're speaking to a is, PhD in psychology, so I can, <laughs> I can analyze you here. I do not like being scared. However, I will watch those YouTube videos of people getting scared. Mm. 
And uh, like, and they're really aw- like, if somebody did that to me, not only would they never be my friend, but I'd, I'd, I'd sue them, <laughs> you know, because like when you see these people walk in a parking garage and all of a sudden this monster walks out and then you see them running, I'm fascinated by it. And then like, oh, the ones I love are when people are, uh, he's disguised as a bush and they're walking by. Wait, and he a jumps president or a plant? Like a plant. Oh, okay, okay. And so, and, and he's disguised as a bush and the people walk by and he, he jumps out at them and the people lose their shit. <laughs> it makes me laugh every time. Again, if somebody <laughs> did that to me, they would be in court, but, uh, I, I love to watch it. So that's when I'm like, <laughs> then I, but see that to me is like, um, it's actually happening. So I don't know if it's like an actor thing. Like I like watching that reaction, but I don't like watching a movie knowing that that person is hiding about to kill them and they're coming around the corner. I mm-hmm. won't watch that. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, mm-hmm. there's so many miss, uh, what's the word uh, you were t- using before? About inconsistencies. Inconsistencies yeah. going on in my brain. Oh. Well, we're all inconsistent. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I'm um, doing some of the psych research on it and a lot of it, uh, it's m- a lot of people, even those who consume a lot of horror, a huge percentage will still say, they don't enjoy it, but they, they're like compelled by it. So it's this oh, dual kind of like, I'm both fascinated, it's appealing, and it's horrifying and disgusting, like all mixed up at the same time. Um, and I wonder if, so they don't watch other people, because I know like Scott Teams, for instance, mm-hmm, who's mm-hmm. a director, he loves watching mm-hmm. stuff, but that's interesting. I guess mm-hmm. some people don't like to watch. Yeah, where it's like, so there is that mix. Everyone's a little bit different, but <clears throat> all of it seems to be, whatever you can kind of, if you can like, right size the fear so it yeah, sounds like yeah, what you're yeah. doing is kind of like the amount that you're comfortable with so this may be a second degree yeah, away yeah, from yeah. the person but really kind of practicing our threat response is yeah the thing. so like yeah and also to uh sorry i cut you off no that was it but it's um there's those videos they are if you just type in jump scare mm-hmm. so it's not necessarily in a parking garage where they mm-hmm. have that music like run so mm-hmm. it's run mm-hmm. and it's just, which gets a little dark but there's just these compilation videos of jump scares where like a husband will jump out at his wife or a wife will jump out at their kids or something or their husband makes me howl laughing. (laughs) But let me tell you what I'm never going to do is a haunted house where you walk in those haunted houses and there's a ton of jump scares. I will never, I will not be found dead. I would be found dead in there because that's what would happen to me. But like that idea of paying money to walk through, I mean, I might as well walk through that Berlin house, me as a kid and recreate that because that's what I was imagining was going to happen to me every time. New podcast pitch. <laughs> yeah. C- Cutter and Tony will go to haunted houses. <laughs> and, and this is just because I'm having just to, to watch go. Tony have a cardiac arrest. Yeah. Uh, and so, so, yeah, so it's like a YouTube <laughs> show, not a, yeah. yeah. We, we got it. One, one episode. One episode. So long, one episode long. It's a snuff uh, movie. <laughs> wait, so the truth is you're not a good Christian. If you don't like haunted houses, don't you know that... That churches put on the best haunted houses. Have oh, you those seen hell those? houses. Yeah. Oh man, what? there was also a take. I think David Cross, and I think Sarah Silverman years ago did did something like recreated yeah. that with comics and stuff because yeah. it is the worst thing that was ever invented. What do you think is behind that then? Fear. I think it's hmm. that's what's interesting is these people, these this faith community, whoever they were, using fear as a tool to do this. And I'm like, where is that in the gospel? Like, where is, you know, it's just, I don't know. And also, even if somebody did come to some realization of God and stuff, the longevity of that, when that's the platform to get somebody into the faith, it's just like, oh, it's heartbreaking. I will send you, since you like YouTube, this is available on YouTube. Yes. A lovely little film from the 90s. Called oh, you're supposed to lose my number after this interview. Oh, okay. I am? Okay. <laughs> email. Okay, great. Email. Well, I we'll see. I won't text I might change you. it up. Um, <laughs> uh, why are my emails always getting kicked back from Tony? It's weird. Oh, Tony, watch M1028, <laughs> uh, which is an early 90s Christian horror movie where classically a young girl, um, I think, is tempted to have a little alky. Mm. and maybe a little sex. Yeah, and yeah. on her way to the party, gets in a wreck and goes to hell. Oh, man. I think and I remember this. it's yeah. like 30 minutes of just like grotesque, demonic, like, ah. Oh. And then she comes out, you know, and becomes sick. Um, and, I, and so I grew up in that sort of subculture where we yeah. had, like, they're showing us this stuff. And I'm yeah. like, what? And we had, 
you know, uh, we, classic. I think what like what pisses me off. Side note: the people that are showing this are probably having behind closed doors sex oh, or like oh, yeah. well, porn or whatever. But like to oh, it's just such an awful tool to use. Well, I, as we've been doing this podcast, that's one of the things we, you know, and I, we joked earlier about Carmen and, you know, I've rewatched Witch's Invitation and it's really all about, like, we really are leveraging fear yeah. and actually masters at it, very good at it. Yeah. Um, knowing the power of it. Yeah, knowing the power of it and, and kind of saying, like, means justify the ends or ends justify the means. But then as I've been doing this podcast, trying to rust through my own kind of like anxieties and fears sure, sure. and like, why, why does this stuff affect me so much? Yeah. Um, and just I'll hear what you think. About it. And you could answer this in terms of like a storyteller or a Christian or, sure, sure. you know, I know normally when you do storyteller, you set aside the Christianity. Part, so <laughs> that's why I say that. Oh, um, my ways. That's right. Um, but I was like, maybe because because at first with the podcast, I was going perfect love, cast out fear. That mm. was sort of like, well, that's where this is going. Mm. And then I was like, oh, but at the same time, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, maybe part of what we're asked to do is as people of faith, as just humans, isn't necessarily to like eliminate fear entirely, mm. but it's to learn how to fear rightly. Mm. How does something like that strike you? As you think about you're mm. watching YouTube and other things and what scares you, what not. Well, and you can't, the first thing I immediately think of is just how the biological thing we're given the fight and flight of the protective component, like there's a protective component of fear. Like there's a reason that we back away from something because it, it can hurt us. You know, that's been back since, you know, for centuries. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, when you were talking, I was just thinking of the, the, and this is where I'm not smart enough to talk about this, but and you're no want, NT right. I'm no NT right. And I want him to be here, but just the different levels of fear, like that, mm -hmm. that statement, perfect love cast it up for the fear of the Lord. Sorry, the fear of the other, when you said the fear of the Lord is beginning wisdom, like what, what is the background of that word fear? Like what's the background of that word fear compared to the background mm -hmm. of the word of perfect love cast out fear? Mm -hmm. Like what's the difference between those fears in terms of all the layers of it? Mm -hmm. I just don't know. Yeah. My working thought right now is that there's something about uh, a fear that terrorizes, like controls, that co-ops, traumatizes maybe. Mm. And then there's a fear that transforms. And I think when we think fear of the Lord, part of it is a kind of, it's more like an awe or respect. So like I go to the Grand Canyon. I'm like, this is amazing. Mm. I better not like run full speed up to the yeah, ledge yeah, like yeah, something happened. Yeah, um, or, you know, I was talking to another friend of mine, um, David Taylor, do you know this mm -hmm. name? Okay. A theologian guy. Um, and uh, talking about like the Leviathan and Joe, you know, like, mm -hmm. and going, well, will that kind of creature exist in the age to come? Probably like this is all God's good creation, mm -hmm. but are we just going to like go poke them? <laughs> you know, like yeah, probably yeah, yeah. not. So that's kind of your thing of like. It's more like a, a, a sober respect for mm. their kind of power or whatever. And you go, yeah, you probably shouldn't just like, you know, go sleep underneath the Leviathan. He's going to roll over and kill you. Yeah. Um, so, so I think it's something like that and something about God being, if God really is who God, well, Christians claim God to be, there is something unwieldy and un tameable and like that yeah. that should garner that kind of stuff so that isn't it kind of as you're talking i'm thinking just of this of the ocean mm -hmm. you know just that that balance mm -hmm. of fear and awe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it is just i have a i have a peace and i have a fear at the same time mm -hmm. and that tension mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know i i something is in is definitely in there but I, and also i was thinking of um you know i think about my daughter and i would be lying if i have not <laughs> used fear as like a narrative to protect her. Like mm -hmm. this can happen, mm -hmm. this can happen, but there's a and granted, some of those are not always good because I don't want to lead in fear. I don't want her to be motivated by fear, but it's coming from such a place of love of like, I really want you protected. Mm -hmm. Whereas I don't know if the hell house <laughs> is necessarily based in love. If it's not, there's like a, it seems like most of that foundation is fear. Yeah. You know? Yeah. My other thought, and this maybe gets to, your parenting thing of um, a big other thing, not just fe fearing rightly is about fearing the right things. And we end up fearing like our, the, the real thing that we're scared of yeah. gets displaced on something else. For me, it's like right now, 
social media with my kids. Oh, oh I gotta do this, this, and technology. And I think that's true, but I think it's yeah. back to that, but what I'm actually, and I have a lot of energy about like, what do we do? Sure, what are sure, parents sure, sure, sure. But then at the core, it's like, my real fear is I can't actually protect them. And I'm not really sure. I don't trust that God is either. And yeah. I'm like, that's the fear I don't, I don't want to acknowledge. Yeah. And it gets displaced and I get, you know, and I feel the same way with like the hell house. Like there's maybe some sincere people that are worried. Sure, but sure. They're uh, manifesting that in some <laughs> some weird ways. Some weird ways. And that social media, that's uh, I immediately thought of like the unknown of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I don't know what monster we're mm-hmm. dealing with here. You know, mm-hmm. so there's that component of like, oh, let's just protect all mm-hmm. sides. Mm-hmm. And then there's the other side of it. it's like that's how these kids, this generation communicates. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, that's Snapchat. I'm not a huge fan of Snapchat, but that's how that community mm-hmm. is talking to each other. Mm-hmm. So for me to remove, I mean, we have boundaries on it, but for yeah. me to remove that from me is mm-hmm. like cutting off communication yeah. from our friends. Yeah. And so it's like, I don't know how to deal with this unknown. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I wonder, uh, do you let your daughter watch horror movies or is it, where, where well, are you I mean, that? we've, t- I've, we, <laughs> or is she even a fan? Is she, no, she is, she likes horror movies, but we've had talks that just to let you know, and sh- she's not, nearly a, I mean she's a sensitive child but she's not she's a really sweet kid but like she knows that if I'm going to watch this it's going to come up in the middle of the night when I because I, I was talking with Laura Lee not yesterday but we talk about a lot about the book that she wrote um, uh, Praying the Hours mm-hmm. and how the, the different monastic prayer hours and now a feature film and now, and now a feature <laughs> film and now and like how there's a 3 a.m. Mm-hmm. prayer time I think it's vigils maybe mm-hmm. but when um, that typically is the time when anxieties are at their mm-hmm. highest and things that are th- things that you feel a rational thought seems very rational at that time mm-hmm. it happened to me last night mm-hmm. I woke up at three and stuff that now if I thought about it, I'd be like that's oh, no big deal but at that time I'm like this feels completely true mm-hmm. and I'm on the anxiety train mm-hmm. about it mm-hmm. and I say that because sometimes when you see stuff like a movie, you will wake up. I will wake up in the middle of the night and think there's somebody in my house Mm -hmm. because of that. When other, every other time I'd be like, no, it's fine. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You know? So it's, Mm -hmm. I don't know that time of the time of the night is tricky. Hmm. So along the lines of like parenting her saying, Hey, okay, you're going to wake up at three and it's going to haunt your, your dreams. Um, do you ever make decisions on roles based on like, is my kid going to see this someday, either now or in the future? Yeah. Um, great question. I, <laughs> I recently, uh, I will say, I used to draw a line. I think I mentioned this on maybe it was some podcast, but I used to draw a line of like what I will do and what I won't do. Hmm. And the older I get, the more I'm, uh, it is project specific. Because if I really believe in the project, I might be doing things in there that I might have before been like, no, I'm not going to do that. But it's case by case. Mm-hmm. And so I, this, a job I just did, there was stuff that came up and I had to have discussions and get to a comfortable place with it. Um, but I will always have the dialogue with Loy. Of, uh, if something tricky is coming out, I'll mm-hmm. say like, just FYI, mm-hmm. uh, this is coming out and this was this and... You know, this is why I did this. And, and also knowing that in my career, I've made mistakes. I've, mm. there, there's been a few things, not a few things, a couple of things that I've done that I'm like, eh, I don't know if that was the best choice. Mm. Are there any things outside of parenting where have there been any, like, roles it, uh, on this sort of, like, uh, kind of traumatizing or evil mm. or something? Anything that you're like, ooh, yeah. that'd be great, but... Yeah, there have been. There's one specific, I won't say the project, but there's one specific I was asked to play this kind of... Um, serial rapist oh. and uh i just mm, nothing against anybody who wants i i was not at a place where i wanted to walk through i'm that. gonna finish that thought for you nothing against anyone who wants to play a serial rapist <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um, but i uh i just you know because i don't know i i i I didn't want, it's not something I wanted to walk through. Yeah. I mean, because obviously they were doing a cautionary tale. Mm-hmm. They were, they were mm-hmm. talking about something that had happened. And, but I don't know, there's a, that process. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I, it was, it was tough to walk through. And I would, mm-hmm. I would even put the category again. It's just because I'm not a fan of horror. I'm not against horror. Mm-hmm. 
but sometimes you know if if the character is like just attacks kids and that's the story or whatever i'm like uh i just i don't for me i don't know if i want to be a part of that yeah you know so there is this question of in our own sacred scriptures yeah. and if you follow into right yeah. long enough yeah. you will know that he will guide you through some pretty horrific yeah. stuff yeah <sighs> What do we make of that? Like, well, how, yeah. how do we think, what, what's the value of yeah. not just like reading it, but then apparently meditating on yeah. some of that stuff? I love you're doing this. Okay. I love you're doing this for, A, I love you're doing it, base. Also, I love that it's, it's highlighting truth. You know, um, it, to me, I put it in the same category of, because I'm genuinely not against, a, a, you know, these kind of, I would say faith-based films that are out there that that are very encouraging and all this kind of stuff. I think it's if, if people are encouraged by them and, and it's entertaining for them, I think that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. However, if they say that's the only true artistic expression or whatever, that's like what are you talking about? There's a whole there's a whole picture of art we're missing. It's that it's that classic example of if you if you um, show somebody a, a picture of the cross and show someone a picture of a tree and ask them which is which is the um, which is the Christian art and they immediately mm-hmm. go to the cross mm-hmm. and it's like that's a tree mm-hmm. that God created and mm-hmm. it's the most beautiful art that you could ever imagine. Mm-hmm. So I, I, to me, what I'm saying is that's a whole picture of art. It's a whole. Mm-hmm. It's looking beyond the box that we put God in regarding mm-hmm. art. And it's the same what you're doing. It's the it's the full story. It's not just that component of it that mm-hmm. the children are taught about Esther. It's looking at the whole picture that's involved. And by the way, truth sets us free. That's truth. Mm-hmm. That's putting it out there. Not to say everybody's going to receive it the same way or it's for everybody, mm-hmm. but it's putting the whole picture out there, which I think is necessary. Thank you. That's good. Um, that's our hope. I mean, I, I think to your point of like the odd... The other weird inconsistency, and we can dump on Christians for a bit, is for some reason anything that they think is worthwhile or valuable needs to be something that anyone and everyone in all places and all time should and could see. I'm like, why do you think I? no seven-year-old should read this? Like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It's not for them. That doesn't mean it's like It's also bad. going against what Jesus did where yeah. he spoke in different parables for yeah. different people. Yeah. You know, he knew his audiences and he adapted them mm. to that audience. Mm. I mean, that's power that yeah. he knew he knew that not mm-hmm. one way of translating was going to be for everybody mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah that's good, that's good i want to say no, there's something though when you were talking like that i did want to touch on is yeah. i am fascinated and i've said this when people go into a movie theater and sit together and mm-hmm. and um uh, um have fear together mm-hmm. that communal because i'm always like why am i going to sit into a dark room and experience fear when i can be just as freaked out watching it cnn you know, it's like, mm-hmm. we're, what is that about that com- communal? It's like sitting around a campfire telling ghost stories, mm-hmm. sitting in a movie theater and experiencing fear together. Why are we making fear this entertainment? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's bad. I just mm-hmm. think it's fascinating mm-hmm. that something that, the same fear that causes trauma that we see on the news and nobody wants to experience, mm-hmm. we're all avoiding it. Mm-hmm. And yet we'll go into a dark room and we'll experience it together. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm, that, I don't under, I, that mm-hmm. confuses me sometimes. Mm-hmm. Then Scott Teams, your friend, has a kind of response, which is interesting. He, I, I was just looking through his transcript and he talked about the safety in that. Yeah. Which is, I'm like, I hadn't thought about it. He's like, you know, it's, it's something about sitting in and I'm afraid and so is she or so is he. Oh, so it's like a one, I'm not crazy. It's like, yeah, I'm not yeah, the only yeah. one that's terrified and now we're terrified together. And I was like, Oh, I've never, I've never, again, I'm kind of more skewed towards your direction. I'm like, Oh really? I'm like, hmm. yeah, but it has had me go back and kind of your story with the piano or mine with it. like, I go, you know, there is something of, I think my most searing memories of fear involve isolation. Yeah, and, so no, and not safe. Yeah, and so yeah. I go, maybe, the, maybe that's one of the attractive things. That's actually know. a really good point. As, as you're talking, I'm realizing, kind of hearing the, own, the answer is, it, fear is an emotion that we have. So it, that's to say that we're meant to experience it. Mm-hmm. So why not experience it in a safe place mm-hmm. rather than an unsafe mm-hmm. place? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I'd, ra- I'd rather <laughs> not yeah. experience either. Yeah. Um, but that's my own avoidance, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. And you can't avoid, you can't avoid the Babadook. I can't avoid, you can't avoid can't life. Avoid the Babadook. Have you seen that yeah. one? The Babadook? The Babadook. No. Don't see it. 
you wouldn't. It would have. It mentioned. sounds like a cartoon. Oh no, it's not. It's a horror movie. Cut to uh, me going to it thinking it's a cartoon. Yeah. And and, oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. The Babadook. You want to go say <laughs> Tony? Uh, it'll be after M ten ten twenty eight. Well, um, thank you. I I have a little something for you. Do you? Yes. Now, um, I well did my research. What I did was uh, I listened to your Smartless podcast. Okay. And then I listened to... Well, you should be listening to everything I've done and watching everything I've well, done. Well, I, I want to say I've, I was already fan. familiar with it, but what I didn't do in terms of research is then go re-familiarize with your entire body of work. Okay, um, that would be great. Well, but I'm pretty that, sure I watched tomorrow's it. tomorrow's activity. That's right. The only thing actually that I haven't really watched, I think I've seen a whole lot of stuff, but is uh, the Harley Quinn series. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Is that pretty good? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a dark character. Yeah, yeah. that did. In, uh, Psycho. What, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You're a, a handful of different things in that, right? Uh, I'm Dr. Psycho, and then I think I just kind of like play like security guards, like okay. random stuff. Actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the one. I think one of your titles that, or credits is Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every actor wants to just let yeah, in like, their IMDb. Um, so, anyway, but and then uh, yeah. our uh, uh, Shannon Sigler, who you met at yeah. some point. We just um, texted, yeah, because yeah, and of so, you. Uh, oh, because of me? Oh, she great. She spoke very highly of you. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, My response thank you, was really? Thank you, Shannon. I know. Like, she doesn't. I'm very good at pulling the wool over people's eyes. <laughs> But I heard on both. So I was really, I find people's sort of love languages interesting, especially mm. not mine. I have a spouse, so we're always doing that. And on Smartless, it sounds like you, on the COVID, uh, during COVID, you learned how to make these rope bowls. Rope bowls yeah. And then this came up on Shannon's podcast. And I go, yeah. Tony's love language is rope bowls. And so my gift to you is I'm going to make you a rope bowl. Oh. And so I decided. Now, again, I don't know exactly what they are or whatever, so I thought, I'm going to make Tony a rope bowl to say thank you. Oh, my gosh. My, my way of saying thanks. That is, this is so I, exciting. Did you really make one? I, I really did. And I'm an artisan. And, and now it's all on podcasts, so again, it may not reflect exactly what you do. Um, so. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, for those who are just listening... <laughs> Uh, I'd like to break this down. <laughs> this is a plastic bowl that looks like it may be from Target uh, with rope in it. <laughs> a rope bowl. And, <laughs> right? And this you're right. And you know I, what? I'm, I'm with you. Lie. I didn't understand why it's so meaningful to you and Shannon, but... And I also just want to acknowledge that he, he spelled thanks T-H-A-N-X. So there's many components to this that are in question. Um, and the rope looks spray painted. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not. It's just very used. I thought that, oh, okay. this isn't. So you, like, so this you is, didn't buy this rope. You gave me used rope. I told you this is handcrafted. Oh, okay. I, so this is hand worn. And hand worn. Yeah. Oh, I this see. is. I used to oh, be. Oh, this a, is so great. I used to. Be I didn't a rope. think I could put a needle through this rope. No, I. Oh. I used to be a rope access technician in another life, and this is one of the ropes we used. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad you said in another life because I would be really shocked if it was in this life. I just, again, I didn't know. Oh, but this, this well, is I'm going to treasure thing. this. Yes. And good. by treasure, I mean it's <laughs> go in the trash. No, thank you. That's very sweet. Well, thank you for having me. This was really fun. Good. Um, we will. <laughs> he says de- good. Definitely good. make sure. <laughs> thank, thanks for having me. Good. <laughs> this, was, this was so fun. Good. I'm glad. <laughs>